Hello farmers, welcome back to No Man's Land. The month of October is here. The wheat has grown and so have the weeds. <laughs> but a few of the things we are going to be taking care of today. And one thing I've already taken care of is the grass field is ready to be cut. Now I went ahead and cut it. And the test was, well, the field score for precision farming was at 57 before I cut the grass. And now if you go to precision farming, come on over, scroll on in. Those fields score have gone up to 80, and it now reads the nitrogen and pH value. Uh, let's see, what's the third and the last one? Third and the last one is weed control and tillage. So if I were to replant this field without plowing it, I'd probably get my tillage up to a full score. Also, our overall score, environmental score, has gone up to 54, and now we get a 1% increase when selling material, items, whatever. Um, so that's good. So we can test that out. I mean, I've been told the production chain stuff that I sell that, pro I mean, it includes everything. So I should get a 1% increase when I sell everything. Um, so we'll be testing out here very, very shortly. But then the first thing I want to test out with you guys in the month of October, as I scroll through my vehicles, where are we here? Uh, there we are. Yeah. So I just cut the grass this morning. I just spent, uh, about 5,500. And that noise you're hearing is my PC. Uh, I just accidentally disconnected something. Um, I spent uh, 5500 to fix the McCormick up this morning after I got done mowing. Because uh, I didn't realize it was, it was that far worn. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I took care of that. So the price uh, overall, we're uh, down to 82000 Now I need to get up to about 95000 ish Probably a little bit more than that to buy the sprayer for killing the weeds. So we're going to work towards that today as well. Uh, but the first thing I really wanted to try out was... The grass field. Uh, so, oh, before I continue, hang on a second, let's set that up. I got to go top off with the silage additive on our forge wagon. So, before precision farming, I got 260,000 liters off this field of grass. So, let's add the silage additive, make sure that's nice and full, and then pick up this grass and put it to our silo bunker. The question is, are we going to get more than before or less? Um, I'm guessing we're going to get more. There were spots on the field where the yield rate was going to be like 125%. Uh, base game is like 100%, so we shall see. Let's go ahead and top off our additive here. Now, before I started using additive, we were getting like 245,000 liters of grass up the field. With the additive, we get an extra 5%, which brought up to 260,000 last time. So now with a combination of precision farming and the silage additive. I'm wondering how much we're going to get out the field this time. Is it going to be the same? More? Less? Don't know. Uh, so other things on the tab today. Well, our soybeans are ready for harvest. The sunflowers are still waiting on that. The sugar cane is ready also. But I do want to test. We're going to, I think we're going to go ahead and harvest the soybeans. And I want to do the field. Well, I want to do, I'm going to do both. But uh, I want to go down to the field down by the grain mill. And I want to plow that field. Uh, the test I want to do is a couple of things. I've been told plowing now with precision farming does not eliminate weeds. That's not what I'm really trying to test. I mean, if it's true, that's true, that's fine, whatever. I don't want to plow now just because of weeds because uh, plowing is bad. Uh, the one thing I'm trying to figure out is if I plow a field but then direct drill, does the direct drilling after plowing supersede the, the plowing that I did? Or done? I, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to take a small field to do a quick test there. Uh, plus, when we'll I plow the field, we'll see if the weeds are quote unquote growing. So that is the procedure kind of for today, anyways. Uh, so what else? Uh, what else is on the schedule for today? Well, I think that's going to be pretty much a full, full episode. I think. Uh, and speaking of full, we're almost full on the forge wagon. Now I don't know if it's my just because I'm thinking I'm going to get more, but it looks like the swaths of grass are a little bit bigger than they usually are. So I'm hoping to get more than the 260,000, of course. Uh, the more grass, that means more silage, which means more I can bring on down to the BGA. And as we know here now, the BGA brings in a good amount of cash for us. All right, so we are just about full here. One load of hopefully six. I'm hoping to get up near 300,000 liters. That's, that would be kind of good. Uh, so one load here, hopefully five more to go. And the one thing else I noticed, because now we are in the month of October, all the trees are turning colors. I'm not getting the flickering of trees. 
yet. Um, I don't know. It's only been October now for a few minutes for me anyways. I wasn't paying too much attention while I was mowing the grass. I was just trying to... I was mowing the grass and kept checking the score. And like, my score is going up in the field after harvest. So, precision farming, I think I mentioned it. I don't know if it was last episode, the episode before. They really recommend uh, starting a new save game when you start precision farming. Um, but, I mean, I guess from what a lot of people are saying and what I heard uh, from from watching other people on YouTube, uh, Mr. Sealy P was one. I like watching him. Uh, but, you know, he's been told, and a couple of you guys told me, it's like, yeah, you got to harvest your fields a few times um, in the middle of a save game before it kind of evens out the scoring. So, that's all fine. You know, we'll get there. I know a couple of you, a couple of you said, no, don't do precision farming. It isn't worth it. Um, I mean, I guess that's up to every individual for themselves, if it's worth it or not. Uh, Price-wise, I mean, if you're doing it for money and, you know, you want to, you know, work the uh, environmental score up and get your price increase up. And, of course, if we're going to find out here shortly, if the yield goes up, then uh, it's worth doing per cents. But, you know, play the game the way you want to. That's fine. Uh, we all play the game to have fun. If we don't have fun doing precision farming, then definitely don't do it. Because <laughs> if you're not having fun, then why are you doing it? But the way I look at it, and I've said it last episode, and I'm pretty sure I said it in the first episode with precision farming, most of the work that you're doing with precision farming, you're doing anyways. So I feel if I'm doing the work anyways, uh, I'm also trying to get the bonus out of it. And plus, I do like uh, having scores up on the screen. Uh, <laughs> try to try to do it, I don't want to say the right way, the correct way. I have no idea. Um the one thing I do see a downside with precision farming is it does eliminate a lot of the equipment that is in the game. So, I mean, like plowing. Plowing is, you know, really, really bad uh, in precision farming. The only thing I can see doing plowing for is when you're creating a new field. Otherwise, you wouldn't want to do it or cultivate or... You know, you get a lot of points for direct drilling. So there's a lot of equipment in the store for cedars and planters. You know, you probably wouldn't want to use that stuff unless it's a direct drill or planter. Um, I, I mean, rollers I, right now as well. Uh, someone did say, like, rolling a grass field now with precision farming. If you've got a grass roller, rolling the grass in precision farming does not add a stage of fertilization. Um, the only thing apparently it does is it makes the grass grow quicker so it's ready to harvest a month sooner than if you don't roll it. Um, I haven't tested it out. That's just what I heard. So, uh, but that's why I'm doing a lot. That's why we're keeping precision farming on for now. And if everything I heard is true and what's going to happen, I'm probably going to leave it on anyways. Uh, but, you know, we're here to test it on out and see for ourselves. Because if I go by the comments from the first two videos, um, some people said, nope, doesn't affect this. Yes, it does affect this. And like, okay, so which does it, you know, a couple people are telling me it does, a couple people tell me it doesn't. So the only way to know, I guess, at that point is to try it out for myself. Uh, we're going to see here shortly anyways. Uh, proof will be in the pudding. We got, some, we got some stuff to sell from the Big Red Barn. And now that our environmental score has gone up enough that we get a 1% increase, we will see. We shall see. And also, a couple of people said, no, precision farming does not increase the yield on a field. Um, but I'm thinking it's going, it's going to. That's my opinion. But like I said, if we get over 260,000 liters off this grass field, then we know. Uh, so right now, I got two loads in. So now that's 100,000 liters. And I got the rest of this grass field to go. And it looks like a lot. So I'm going to get more of this done. Um... And I'll bring it back and we'll see where we stand here in a few minutes. On our last line of grass swath, I got to pick on up. So, like I've been saying, about 245,000 liters before we did the silage additive. With the silage additive, we got about 260,000 liters. And the question is, do we get more than 260,000 liters with silage additive and precision farming? 
um, and I, I was guessing around 300,000 liters and I was off a little bit. Uh, I'll show you what we have here in just a moment. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to fill this trailer as well. Uh, if you look at the silage additive in the bottom right hand corner, if you remember how much we used last time and see how much I used this time, you might have a rough idea. Yes, yeah, so you, can, you can tell where this is going. We've got more grass than before and more than I thought we would. Uh, we're over 300,000. All right, this will be 350,000 liters going into the silage pit. And we got about maybe 10,000 liters left, I would say, somewhere in there. So, yeah, about 100,000 liters more I'm getting off this field. That is significant, uh, especially when it comes to bring it down to the BGA. Yeah, I don't think I can get in there. I really need to be compact. I should be compacting this as I go along with this much grass in here. But uh, we'll, we'll get it in there one way or the other. Just don't get stuck. That 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 can happen. Now let me turn on the HUD there. So you can see we already got 300,000 in here and this would make it 350. Plus with the extra to go. So an extra 100,000 liters of grass off this field. Let's go get the last little bit here. So that in itself... By the time I bring it down to the BGA and that gets processed to energy, and I'm wondering, do I get more from my energy now as well? That we're going to get a plus one, plus one percent, and you can get up to uh, plus fifteen percent if you get your environmental score up to a hundred. All right, so it's this, this additional twenty-seven hundred, so. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get uh, 352,772 liters of grass off the field. That shouldn't change my uh, score off the grass field. Yep, 80, 80, 80. Uh, the one thing I'm going to do, though, is we're going to go ahead and sell so the stuff at the Big Red Barn next before I harvest any fields. When I go to harvest those fields, I think those field scores are going to go down, and we could get back down to 53%, and then that means uh, I won't get no increase in selling price, so... I want to sell that stuff while we have the increase to make sure uh, we get the increase when we sell production chain stuff. But I've been told by a few people, yes, that sell price affects everything. Just dump that into there. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and park this right here. Turn on the HUD and, yeah, what did it say? 352.772? Okay, 352.777. That is quite a bit more. All right, let's go ahead and grab our Mac Anthem. And let's grab our Crone trailer and go pick up the stuff at the Big Red Barn and go sell that. Yeah, I think it's actually, uh, I had a quick look, that, that John Deere sprayer for spot weeding is actually like 92 grand. It's expensive. It's almost... Uh, the, the sprayer is almost the same price as adding the sensors. Almost. So am I close enough to get all of them? Almost. Okay, let's go ahead and what else do we got here we got tons of oat drinks we got tons of oatmeal waiting to be spawned uh i am gonna have pig food at some point so i gotta make sure i turn the auto auto loader off after it gets unloading because i don't want the pig food to get in there A lot of popcorn, a lot of oat drink. Some more popcorn, tomato sauce. Still waiting on the pig food and french fries. So, yep, there's the pig food. And that should be it.
All right, let's go to the big red barn. Let's get in some cash. And also, let's see if we get that extra 1%. Now, you're not going to see the 1% or whatever increase or decrease that you have in your sell price until you go sell the items. It's not going to show up on uh, this page here. So if I go here, it's not showing me the 1% in here. I'll add the 1% for us after we sell, hopefully. So if you watch the upper right hand corner when my total comes in, yeah, environmental score reward. So we do get it with production chain stuff. Uh, that's everything out of the Chrome trailer. So I got an additional, what was that, $138 today from selling that items. Not too bad. I like that quite a bit. Uh, no, I didn't want to hit all the wrong buttons here. Uh, going to bring this on back. So the next thing we're going to do is now we got some soy to go ahead and harvest. And that's probably going to drop our score because when we harvest it, that's going to get rid of all the fertilizer off that field and everything else. But it needs to be harvested at some point. So our scores are probably going to suffer for maybe another year, give or take. Uh, but after next fall, I think our scores will be up there, uh, be rather close. I think I am going to replant the grass field, maybe not today, uh, but maybe in November. And the reason why I won't, might as well do it in the fall, because I'm not going to get another harvest in this year. And I want to replant it so I get my tillage score on those fields uh, better than what it is. So chrome trailer and truck needs to be put away for now. I'll meet you down at the Ideal 9T and we'll start harvesting some soybeans. I think the fence is already down there with the trailer as well. And uh, we need to get to work. All right, let's unfold the 9T. Hook up to our wonderful header. And hopefully make some quick work of these soybeans. Now I did mention the sugar cane is ready as well. Uh, but I don't think we're going to get to that today. Already got enough to do. So no straw on the soybeans. Uh, probably should check to see what our score is. But I think the score is going to go down here. Let's see, we're at 54 and 55 in these fields. So these scores are probably going to drop. This is going to take me just a little while. A few more passes in this soybean field will be done. I didn't really time myself, but I'm going to guess it probably took like 20 minutes or so. Not too bad. Uh, soybean harvest is going as well as I thought it would. Uh, soybeans don't yield that well to begin with. Uh, this will be my third load in the combine. So, let's see, 17. I got 34,000 liters in the trailer. And pretty soon here we're going to add some more. And then I'll bring that over to the big red barn and start producing some soy drink. And then the big red barn will just keep on making us more money every day. Yeah, every product that we plant here pretty much either feeds the animals or we use it for uh, production chain purposes. We don't really sell any grain outright. Uh, I haven't checked the score in the field yet. I think I'll just probably look at the overall score, see if it's dropped at all. Harvesting should quote unquote in precision farming reset things in a way. So the score is going to probably be wacky now. But by next year's harvest, after we harvest, we should see scores relatively good. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get 100 on every field. I'm not going to try to shoot to get 100 score in every field. But I would like to be in the upper 80s, low 90s, I guess. 
that's the kind of thing about precision farming. You, I mean, I guess you can approach it any way you like to. I mean, if you want to go for the perfect score, uh, you can. If you just want to just do the farming like you normally would and try to, you know, get the bonus yield uh, off the field for crops and also get the bonus price, you can use it for that. That's the one thing I do like about Farming Simulator is there's so many different ways you can play the game and there's like no wrong way to play it. Everyone's going to play it differently and have fun their own way. I know like when the Seasons mod came out back in 17, um, I enjoyed it immediately and there's a lot of people like, no, I, I, I can't stand Seasons. And I thought, okay, I thought Seasons, a lot of people will love it. A lot of people just like to plant the crop and harvest, not do any of the lime, not do any of the fertilization, uh, any of that stuff. And that's fine too. And the 60 foot header definitely, I'm enjoying it quite a bit, saves me a lot of time. Uh, I've had no issue, issues with it other than this part right here, which is when it comes to unload, uh, the pipe on the ideal isn't quite long enough. I wonder if the on the class Lexian, I know the class Lexian had a really long pipe. I wonder if that would uh, make it better. Let's see, is this going to all fit in there? I think just barely. I think we're going to barely get all the crop in there. Now, I still got another field of soybeans to do, but that field's rather small. I don't think I'm going to combine out of that. And I kind of can't wait to go past our little park that we built this past year to see what it's like in the fall. I'm not sure if that's actually on. We'll say it's not. I think it's on. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah, okay, so you just got to back up away from it and it'll auto snap in. Okay. That's another great feature that they added in uh, Farming Simulator 22 with the header trailers. Well, I'm not going to drive around the river and the lake. I'm going to go ahead and take the shortcut that we normally have taken before. Let me go ahead and fold in the combine as we drive on down the road. Yeah, I'm glad to see that the autumn trees are not flickering like they were last year. Let's go get this other field of soybeans done. And then this field down here, I want to go ahead and bring the plow down and um, plow the field. Now we will get rocks, uh, but the one thing I want to see is after I get done plowing or after we plow a little bit, I'm going to get out and go to where we plowed and see if it still says weeds are growing because apparently plowing will not get rid of the weeds. Now I know that technically that also hurt our environmental score. It's not a negative against your score. You just get a score of zero. Um, but I'm wondering if I, when I direct drill afterwards, like I said, will it override that we subsoiled it or plowed it? I don't know. There's the park in the fall. Looking rather well. I'm actually thinking about expanding this field down here. That's why I don't mind plowing this one. Uh, the header is on that side. So I need to spin this around in a way. Might as well unfold, unfold the combine while I'm driving around circles. And 
still not using manual attach anymore. I do like manual attach, but just doing so much work and getting out and uh, doing that all the time. And I can see where that can get annoying after a while. But if I wasn't making videos right now, I'd probably leave it on. So I was having a quick look at the soy prices in case I have too much. And uh, the soy prices right now are so-so. I mean, if I have too much, I don't know how much the Big Red Barn's going to take. I'm guessing it probably takes 50,000 liters, which the Fed probably almost has right now. So I'm going to have a little bit of extra soy left over. Yeah, so I'm not sure right here with this field if I want to extend it further out where we're looking or that big open field there. Do I just want to make one huge... I may just make one huge uh, field for cereal crop. That way we have plenty of cereal crop. Aha, uh -huh, so we got another section of field. All right, so where's it going to pick back up again? Alright, so this is interesting. I am getting crop destruction because we got that turned on. So... Let me go over this far. Interesting. So it's picking up there. Now this was a problem as well in, <laughs> if I get too close to the edge of the field, yeah, this was a problem as well in 19, in some cases. So I'm guessing when I get to the edge of the field, if I turn around and come back the other way, it's going to harvest it, no problem. But we'll see here in a second. I wonder if I got any more silage still left at the BGA being processed. I hope so, because that'll be an additional $2,500 if so. And I'm looking for the additional money because the next thing I want to do is grab that uh, the spray spotting weeder and take care of the weeds that's in our wheat fields. Uh, nope. So, yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on with this side of the field over here. Alright, we'll ignore that for now. Hopefully I don't have any more other issues in this field. I didn't have it with a smaller header. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Well, it seems harvesting this section in the other, well, uh, perpendicular direction definitely does uh, make a difference, I guess. Not sure why, but... Just trying to see if the ground had a big enough slope to it to where maybe the header was getting lifted far enough to, off the ground to where it wasn't sensing there was a crop there. Uh, but I don't think that was the case. This field is harvested. Let's go ahead and put the trailer, uh, the, the trailer on the header. No, I want to put the header on the trailer. That's probably better. And then we'll go back, grab the fence, bring that on up to the big red barn, and we'll get the soy in there so it starts producing some soy drink. 
And then we'll grab the T... No, I can't grab the T6. I don't have that plow anymore. I'm going to have to grab the McCormick, I guess. Um, is that too far? Are you going to snap on there? I mean, I think it's going to be a little bit too far for it. Hopefully I can grab that header because it rolled quite a ways away. Just barely. Yeah, try to push it off a little bit more. That works. Alright, there's that. Actually, put the pipe in. I might as well bring this right back to the farm itself. With the crop in it. Because like I said, I don't think the big red barn's going to be able to take all of it anyways. Well, almost 50,000 liters of soybeans going into the big red barn. So that's why that's being dumped in there. Let's go down to our production buildings. Soy drink, we will activate that. And then, of course, soy drink should be on storing, I think. Soy drink is on storing. Um, the only thing on distributing is flour because, yeah, that's what it does here. And, yeah, 50,000 liters of soybean can only go in here. Uh, the combine is back at the farm. And I took the soybean that was in the combine and put that into our silo. So we'll use that for uh, future times when the Big Red Barn needs some more soy. Well, I thought I was going to use a McCormick, but since I'm in the fence, I might as well bring the fence on back to the main farm, grab the plow with that, go back down that field, and start plowing. And let's do a quick see if uh, the weeds are going to be gone or they're going to actually start to be growing. And it looks like, oh, I just noticed at the 10 o'clock hour, our BGA is still active because we are at 90, I think we're at 94 five ish on uh, money, but now we're up to 97,184, which is good because that will allow us to be able to buy that sprayer and we can take care of the weeds, hopefully in our wheat fields. All right, let's put plowing to a test in precision farming here. So if I get out, it should say, yeah, so it says weeds growing. Right now, if we come out here, well, it doesn't say weeds are growing. It doesn't want to get closer to here. So I'll be interested to see what happens later on. So plowing still gets rid of weeds, it looks like, actually. Now, I don't know if they're gone for now and they'll start growing again. Uh, but, you know, in the base game, when you plow, it gets rid of the weeds for a whole year. I don't know what it does in precision farming, but right now it's kind of showing that the weeds are going bye-bye. But the other test I want to do, I'm going to completely plow this field. Um, I will have to pick up the stones in it, though. Uh, but the other thing I want to do afterwards is after we direct drill this, would that supersede that I plow the field? I, I'm going to guess not. I'm going to guess they did think of that, but maybe they didn't. I don't know. But the only way to tell is to actually do it and see what happens. So I'm actually thinking I'm going to leave this field not planted until next year. Maybe I'll put sorghum into it. I think sorghum I plant in the springtime. Uh, if not, maybe I can put oats into it. So I want to see if the weeds come back. Uh, because we did get rid of the weeds completely. Well, for now anyways. But like I said, uh, base game, plowing the field, gets rid of the weeds for a harvest cycle. In precision farming, I got told that plowing does not get rid of the weeds. It does when you initially plow it, but will it come back in a day or so? I cannot say one way or the other. Uh, the one thing I want to do is I'm going to drop that plow off there for a second. I'm going to put that on the front of the fence. Because while we're down here, we might as well go to the store and pick up our weeder, weed sprayer. And I can put that right in the back of the fence. Which uh, could use a little bit of repair and a little bit of diesel uh, thrown into it as well. 
Yeah, it's nice to see all the trees turning colors. And it's nice to see that they're not flickering either. Our beautiful little park. Hopefully I get some more time to work. Well, I, hope, I usually hope every weekend I can get about an hour or two just doing some more decorating here and there. This week has been a real busy one for me. And with this weekend coming up, I got a lot of things I need to do. Springtime is, well, yeah, springtime is really here. Now, finally where I am. Um, about time I get the mower out and maybe uh, see if that fire is up after the long winter. Pick up the yard. Long winter will make the yard look like total trash. All right, so we are here. So currently the only weeder that does the spot spraying is the one that comes with the DLC. And it's this John Deere right here. So initial cost is uh, 52500 but the sea and spray costs an additional 39000 Ouch. Uh, but it'll save you quite a bit on herbicide because it's not going to spray where the weeds are. Um, so if we go ahead and buy that for 91500 Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Another extra 500 for narrow tires. Forgot about that. Uh, I can't put Michelin's on there because Michelin's, uh, the only narrow tires you can get is on the Trelleborg. And we want the narrow tires because in case we have to go into a field of weeds into it, after the crop has grown, uh, we're going to need narrow tires. I think the T6 can have narrow tires on it. I can't remember. And narrow tires are important to us because we do have crop destruction turned on. As you saw when I had the harvester going into that those soybeans that we're not harvesting at the time. Uh, nope. And... There we go. Now we're attached. All right, we'll bring the John Deere sprayer back. I'll probably use the uh, T6, but the only tractor I have not used yet today. And we'll take care of our weeds. Now, I will show you the map of the weeds. It's not full-blown full weeds in the entire field. It's kind of clumpy, uh, which is, I guess, good. And that's what the CN spray is going to do. But we'll have to fill this up with a herbicide and... I only got $5,000 left right now. If I need some cash, I'm actually thinking about selling the 770. I know I've been saying I want to keep it. But honestly, I'm trying to think, when am I actually going to use it at this point? I'm not sure when. So if I need some cash, the combine, the 770 combine and the header will be sold. I almost, when I got back to the farm, brought the fent over to repair it. Because it said, oh, it needs repair. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You need the cash for the uh, herbicide. I'm just over here for the T6. I want to see if the T6 can take narrow tires. Uh, let's see here. Wheels and weights. Twin wheels. Rear twin wheels. Y tires. All right. How about if I go to Trelleborg? So if I put Trelleborg, I can do narrow tires on the T6. So that's good to know for the future. Should not eat it for today because our crop is only in stage one. So I should not destroy it at all. So let's go ahead and grab our new John Deere sprayer. And see how much herbicide I can put into this thing. I think the last time I did herbicide was on the Pacific Northwest in 19. Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted in here. Uh, yep, herbicide should have been in this one here. That's nitrogen. We don't want nitrogen. Uh, let's see, I can go ahead and fix that by emptying that out. I lost a little bit of cash there. That's what we want. We want the herbicide. Might as well top it off and put me right down to zero. Put me down to zero. You want to. Actually, I think I'm going to be able to fill it up without uh, going down to zero. All right. 
Um, so there we go. Change nitrogen value. No, we got. We don't have nitrogen in here. Uh, automatic application rate is on. Do I have to change anything for the sensors on the sprayer? It doesn't appear to be. Let's go ahead and unfold it. It's a pretty good working width. So while this is unfolding, let's go into this page here and let's see, I need to go to this page. And if we go to weeds, you can kind of see now the weeds and the fields are kind of clumpy, spotty here and there. Um, kind of what we're used to in seasons in 19, that kind of sense. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see. Just checking everything. So there's no sensor on the sprayer to turn on and off, apparently. Let me get going straight here. Well, what you can kind of see is not all the sprayers are coming on at once. They're kind of like, they are what they call spot spraying. So no sensors are turned on. It's just going to do it automatically. Now, spot spraying is going to give us max score for weeding. I'm barely using any herbicide whatsoever. Now, we're only in the first growth stage, so I don't know with, if, I mean, it's going to come back, the weed's going to come back. I'm not too sure. But usually with herbicide, the weeds will not come back. They will after you harvest, but uh, not until then. So that's the other thing with precision farming. You start getting this equipment. It will save you. I mean, if you're doing all this stuff anyways, it's going to save you money on seed. It's going to save you money on artificial fertilizer or whatever fertilizer that you're using. And even if you're using herbicide like this, it's going to save you on that. So you can see right now, I'm hardly using any, any uh, herbicide. very little so the working width for me doesn't really matter so why would you want to change uh, let's see I don't think um, yes yeah, so why would you want to change the working width of the sprayer when it's only going to spray where it sees the weeds we'll check the map here in a second so let's turn that off there. Don't need to be looking at that. But now you can get a better look of uh, how the jets are working on the sprayer. It's only spraying where the weeds are. And so far I've only used 2% of herbicide. Now I'm going to assume if we give modders some time, they will come out with other sprayers and equipment for all this precision farming stuff. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Now, if we go into here, you can see the weeds are all dead. I did miss a couple spots on the edges, uh, but overall, not too bad. Uh, you're going to tell me I don't got no weeds in that field? Oh, no, because I plowed that field. All right, so I don't have to do that field currently. Now the one thing I, I, I am noticing, because maybe you're thinking about it, like, does he, does he know he's got that sugarcane field to harvest, and we're down to a thousand dollars, and um, we got at least a lot of equipment. I am aware of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll get to that at some point. Not this episode. We're gonna take care of the weeds first. Oh, the one thing I want to check though. Let me back up a little bit because I just turned it off. Uh, let's see if I go to here. Uh, to here so now look at this lot number 69 look at the score well lot number 69 we're at 69 for a total score uh, but the score for this lot completely is almost at 100 
for spot spraying. I wonder if I bring the weeder top and bottom tillage soil sampling. Where's weeds? From? I wonder if I go up there and spray it for weeds, even though they're not there with a spot sprayer. Will that count? Even though there's no weeds in the fields, let's just say I take this sprayer up there, turn on the sprayer, and go around. Will that count? Oh, I got to do that now, don't I? All right, let me take care of this field first. And then I'll have to go up there and I'll do that field quickly. I say quickly. I'll do that field there and see if it counts as me doing weeds. I don't know if it will or won't. Well, so far, I've only used 12% of the herbicide we have in our sprayer. Other field is done, and the good news is our score, well, we're up to 55, and now we got a 2% increase in sale price. Um, you can see some of the scores are going up here. We got 80 in this field now, 67 in this one. That one's still at 69. This one's up to 70. Uh, but what I'm trying to find out here is, uh, we're looking at the third line for this slot here. That would be for spraying weeds. Now, yes, we don't have weeds at all, but I'm just wondering if I just go over with a sprayer for herbicide, is that is Precision Farming going to see that I did weeding, even though there's no weeds here, and count it? Well, let's see. Let's, if I start uh, weeding this field here, I shouldn't use any herbicide because there's no weeds, uh, but we're waiting to see if these bars go up. And if they do, well, then that's going to help us out. Let me go ahead and turn that on. Now, I shouldn't use any herbicide whatsoever. It's going to be hard to see where I've been because... There's no weeds to guide me if they're, you know, growing, dying, whatever. I thought about hiring Frank to come over here and do this, but I only got $1,500 in my bank account. So, I'm going to go around here, uh, do two headlands. We'll come back and see if it's changing at all. And if it does, then I'll continue. It doesn't matter. I'm just wasting diesel fuel at this point. Um, but it'll be a good little test to do. Because let's say the field I plowed earlier... If weeds don't come back at all, well, I can get around that by getting still 30 points by running the sprayer around a field, even though I'm not using anything, just to get the 30 points for the score. It's kind of cheesing the system that way, but if it works, it works, I guess. Um, I may or may not do that. We'll have to see. But I won't plow a field if I don't get the tillage up to 100% by direct drilling afterwards. I don't know if the direct drilling is going to overseed the plowing don't know and we're not going to know until we plant something in that field if it counts have no idea i think i may have done enough here look at that the score yeah so it went up as far as the field is concerned i've done it and i really don't need to do any more looks like i've done enough because i i got a full bar of killing the weeds in this field spot spraying so even though there's no weeds in the field, if you do spot spraying for a little bit, you can get your score up. I, I do this testing, so you don't have to. Uh, let's come over to here. Let's see, if I get this field up here. There we go, that map up there. I should be in the other field now. I don't know how much of it I gotta do before it sees that I've done it. And now this one's up to 77 because it's not seeing no weeds. Uh, I gotta do a little bit here. Because I got a little bit of field in lot number 12. I got to do a little bit in field number 15. So you can kind of cheese the system here in a way. Uh, if you want to do it, you can. Uh, I'm doing it just because it's fun to test things out. <laughs> like I said, though, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this in the future or not. I have no problem not plowing a field uh, and having to spray for weeds. It just gives us another, uh, I don't want to see another job to do, but it does change things up often enough. All right, now that should be at 77. Now let me go back over to the beginning of the field, and I'm missing a spot somewhere. Is there another part of a field in that? No. So I'll have to go over and get wherever that corner piece is. I'm not sure where it is. Well, wherever it was, I got it. So we're all set there. Uh, soil sampling, which one is? So I didn't get soil sampling in this field. How much is soil sampling going to cost me? All right, let's go ahead and do that. Now we're up to 77. And our overall score is now, hang on a second here, uh, 56. 
so we are slowly getting up there. Um, I think our score would be higher in this field right now if we harvested the field when precision farming was on because that would read the pH and nitrogen value. Apparently, that's only when it reads it. So you can see here, well, the nitrogen value in these fields here, yeah. Uh, th th that's why this these scores aren't higher. It's not reading the nitrogen in those fields. But if we go to nitrogen values, we're pretty darn good there. So yeah, I don't think that will reset again until I harvest again. But our score is slowly going up and now we're, we're going to be making a little bit more money when we sell things, which is good because I only got $1,300 in the bank account. And I don't know, no, I really don't know how much I need for the forage harvester and the header for the sugar cane. Uh, and of course, I got I got to lime some fields. So that's going to cost me some change. But we do got some cakes I can sell. Uh, for one, uh, the BGA is still making some cash. So, I mean, I could also sell some furniture, some other stuff as well. Um, but honestly, I'm probably going to be selling that 770. I don't know how much it's even worth. Uh, and the header, but that would be enough to get the lime done. Because I definitely got to get lime down in the two soybean fields that we harvested. Here and here. Uh, that would be pH value. So they're a little bit low, and that's fine. And then, of course, we'll be harvesting the sunflowers in November. Uh, the sugar cane, I could do either, t you know, October or November. So I'll have to see. But since we are here, let me take a quick look to see what I need. Let's see, four harvest headers, and I got to come on down to the modded ones. Uh, wow, they are uh, expensive. So this is for sugar cane. And if I go to lease it, it's, I know I don't, oh, I can't see how much it is to lease equipment because we don't have the money. That's kind of, I wish they would change that so we can kind of see how much I need to get for that. So uh, I think the sugar cane harvest got to wait until November. Uh, the BGA will be working for a while. Speaking of, yeah, let me just double check on that. Uh, how are we doing on the BGA here? Uh, silage. Okay, I still got a good amount of silage in the fermenter uh, to be done. So that's going to be a while. And digestate, we're up to 100,000 liters in there, which is good. I don't think I have any more to process. I got a little bit more to process here. And the good thing is... We got over 300,000 liters over at the BG. Uh, wait, what was, it? what was our total? Was it 350? I think we got 350,000 liters, right? Is it 350 or 300? I forgot already. Too many numbers today in my head. It's 350,000 liters. So um, I need to get this compacted and covered up. So start of, you know, let's say noon in November, this will be silage. And we can bring that on down the BGA and start keep bringing in the cash. So cash flow is a little bit low right now, but you know, we're going to be making more money with precision farming. Uh, the yield went up significantly here. Yes, we know the nitrogen is bad. I think I will be planting, replanting the grass here because as far as this is concerned, oh, I got to get back on. So, so, is it soil types? Soil types, yeah. So if we go back on here, it doesn't, uh, the tillage is, it doesn't see when I planted the field and how I planted it. So if I get that taken care of, uh, what else is it also low on tillage and weed control? Are, are the weeds growing here? Well, I know I can take care of the weeds just by coming over with the John Deere sprayer and quote unquote spraying the field. I get rid of the weeds and get it up, get that count on up. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, probably replant this with some grass, even though there's grass here. Uh, with our direct drill and that'll take care of that and it should stay there all the time because grass never really gets down to zero anyways that's gonna do it for today guys hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode i do appreciate you watching as always i'll catch you again right here in no man's land but until then have a good one